In today's video, I talk about the soft tissue lesion that always occurs at the same spot. So you're scrolling through a cervical spine MRI all the way to the back. And there you have it. You might have seen this lesion yourself already. I have seen several cases over the last few years and every time there was a little diagnostic uncertainty about it. And luckily for me, there was a publication in December last year that I will show you later in this video that was dealing exactly with this kind of lesion. So stick till the end of this video to make sure you add this diagnosis to your arsenal. So in this particular case, the story was as follows. The patient had a cervical spine MRI for neck pain. And as an incidental finding, the radiologist saw this mass here in the paravertebral soft tissues at the level of the second and third rib here on the right hand side here. And it was not completely imaged here. The reporting radiologist suspected a vascular lesion, but it was not completely imaged and there was still some concern regarding malignancy, etc. So she came back one month later with this MRI. So here on this axial T2 fat saturated sequence, you can see this T2 hyperintense mass lying deep to the rhomboid muscles, just next to the superior posterior serratus muscle here medially to the scapula and that's basically the very typical location that these lesions can occur. If you look closely on this sagittal T1 here you can see the serratus superior posterior and also the rhomboid muscles here and it's intermuscular so it's not an intramuscular lesion but it's between the muscles. This is a very important point. This is also nicely illustrated here on this coronal view that we have these fat planes here between the lesion and the um, adjacent musculature. And here on these axials you can also see that there is some fat tissue in between these muscle isointense spots here. And then you give gadolinium and you can see we have some muscles nearby and we have very subtle contrast enhancement here. We don't have any phloids, we don't have any phlebolites. So what it is, it's a periscapular intermuscular vascular plexus. So it's not a tumor, it's not a hemangioma, it's not a sarcoma, it's not a neobursa with snapping scapula or any other crazy idea. Wait, I have an idea. Really? What is it? Such as brown adipose tissue or hypernoma or something like it. It seems to be just a vascular plexus that is typically occurring at this location. Before we move on, I would like to welcome Veronica, who is the newest patron. And uh, hi, Veronica. And also, if you want to know more about Patreon, go to the link down in the description below. Go over to the homepage and have a look what you get there for supporting me. You can see here this paper, MR imaging features of presumed retroclavicular and periscapular intermuscular vascular plexi, a study that assessed over 443 consecutive MRIs of the brachial plexus and interestingly these lesions were present in about 10% of cases so chances are you already have seen a few of them or should have seen them or were confused by them so it's not an uncommon lesion 1 in 10 and you can see here this is the classical spot here medial to the scapula deep to the rhomboid muscles there you have this hyper intense lesion here with these little dots, but typically no flowoids, no, no flebolo, flebolites, and so on. And interestingly enough, there is another location that they can occur, and this is just um, behind the scapula here. So that's why in the title they talk about the retroclavicular and the periscapular intermuscular vascular plexi. So these are the two key locations to make the diagnosis here. In case you're wondering whether they have any clinical significance, let me just tell you, no, they don't. You can see here that they are present in about half of the cases on the contralateral side of the symptoms and the other way around. It can be bilaterally and if that's the case, it's obviously not a malignant tumor or very unlikely, especially if it's occurring at the exact same spot on both sides. And here on the CT scan you can also see that there is some fat tissue in between. Here again just another example. I think you get the point. This location 
this kind of lesion with little fat in between, subtle enhancement, think of a periscapular intermuscular vascular plexus. I just realized during editing that I forgot to mention during filming that basically this study was a retrospective study and they don't have histopathology to prove what they say. So it's still not proven that it's actually a vascular plexus in that sense. So keep that in mind, but it's so common, it's always the same spot. And um, even if you say it's a hemangioma, why should it occur always at the exact same spot? But it's not like a terrible mistake because it doesn't have any substantial consequences anyways. That's it for today. Give me a like if you add this diagnosis to your arsenal and also comment below if you have seen uh, such lesions and how you dealt with it. It would be really interesting for me to see how other people deal with such things. And as always, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and also um, make sure you hit the bell notification button so you get an email every time I upload a new video. And with that, happy learning and see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,